Chad. This is Jennifer. Welcome to Purple Collar Life. In this episode, we're talking about hamburger. And you can see here, and in the thumbnail, that we bought 40 pounds of whole cow hamburger. So for those of you that aren't aware, whole cow hamburgers, when they take all the meat from the cow, combine it to make the best burger possible. So all the parts that normally would be steaks or the really good meat that you'd use in those other cuts of meat, those parts get combined with the ground to make the best possible hamburger, and that's called whole cow hamburger. So we like to buy our meat at the local stores. Previously, there was a local store that we thought was providing us with local grass-fed beef. We later found out that that meat was coming from Argentina. So now we're very particular about where we get our hamburger. There are two local places that we really like to use. One is a butcher and farm combined. So they raise their own grass-fed cattle and then butcher them on site. Another one is a, a butcher that buys only local beef from farmers that we know. We're gonna place these patties on this freezer paper on a cookie sheet, and then we'll put them in the freezer on a quick freeze. Now this is how we typically make our hamburgers, but during the pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic, when we ran out of our pre-made burgers, we did buy from one of the local butcher shops that we like and trust, the pre-pattied burger for $4.25 a pound. And that wasn't a bad price, but this whole cow burger that's not pattied is $3.50 a pound. So we're saving 75 cents a pound by doing this pattying ourselves. The other advantage is we don't only make hamburger patties. Sometimes we like to pre-cook the hamburger, brown it in a skillet, and then we set it aside for use in chili or stuffed shells. Tacos. Tacos, we put the taco mix right in the skillet with it and then freeze all that pre-cooked so that it's easy dinners. You just pull a bag of frozen taco out the day before and cook it the next night in the microwave, warm it up, and you can have tacos pretty quickly for dinner. Jennifer has a really good meatloaf recipe and she'll use her KitchenAid mixer to make meatloaf mix and then put them in the pans and we'll freeze them that way. And then when we need, again, when we need a quick dinner, we can just put those meatloaves that are already mixed up and ready to go in the oven. And what I do with those meatloaves is I actually get my meatloaf pan out. I put either freezer paper or saran wrap in it. After I get it all mixed up, I press it down into my form and then just pull it out in the saran wrap, put it in a freezer bag so it's already ready to go in the correct size and I can just push it right back down into my pan when I'm ready to cook it. And you can see in the frame there that these are pretty big patties. These are about one third pound. And again, you don't need to make them this big. Some people make them quarter pound and you can make them whatever size you want in this press. This is just, we're pre-weighing it here on a scale and we like them as third pound burgers. So we're aiming between like five and a half and six ounces. And when you have two people working on it, it goes much faster. And I should note, I absolutely hate raw meat. So those are in the freezer now. They'll quick freeze and then we'll put them in freezer bags. Typically what'll happen is the local farmer will call us. They typically call my parents actually and say, would you guys like some hamburger? We're getting ready to take a cow. And then mom and dad call us and other members of the family. We get together enough people that it makes sense to get, you know, over a hundred pounds or a couple hundred pounds of hamburger. We divide it up among ourselves. It works out really nicely that way. It benefits the local farmers, benefits us to have this fresh hamburger that we know exactly where it came from and how the cows were fed and raised. Doing it this way, we haven't had to buy hamburger from a place like Walmart or any other chain store for a long time. And there's just a huge difference in taste too when you're eating these, this whole cow hamburger when compared to like a, a ground 80-20 that you get from the store. The consistency is different, the flavor is different. So I'm not sure if I said it or not. 
our freezer has a power freeze option. So when Jennifer put those cookie sheets of patties into the freezer, she turned that power freeze option on and that will, that will quick freeze the burger so that we can process them faster. It keeps the meat out of that temperature danger zone. So the Tupperware burger press is a three piece system. So it's got an inner ring that you put inside it. Push the amount of meat down, use the press to press, and it squeezes it out to the edges of that ring, the inner ring. And then when you remove the inner ring, you have a nicely pressed patty that's not stuck to the edges. So for this batch of burger, we ordered 40 pounds with a savings of 75 cents per pound. 75 cents times 40 pounds is $30. So we had a savings of $30 this time by taking the time to patty it ourselves. Um, Chad's mom and dad ordered, I think maybe 40 pounds also, so they had more savings. And the thing we like the most about it too like Chad said, is that we know exactly where it came from, we know what farm that this cow came from, we know how it was cared for. So in that first 10 pound bag, and we had 20 pounds here out on the counter, there's another 20 pounds in the refrigerator, the first 10 pound bag made us 27 patties. So we were a little bit more than a third pound per burger. Thank you for joining me today in the video. It's my pleasure. The other advantage to getting the 10 pound bags and processing it ourselves is like I said, we don't always make only burgers. And since this is not frozen, we can do whatever we want with it. Usually when we get a batch in the fall, um, it makes it really easy on me when I make you know, 10, 12 meat loaves, I'll make several pans of stuffed shells and freeze. I'll do the ground burger to throw in a pot of chili which makes it really nice on a school night or when Mackenzie has games and we come home and it's late, we don't have to go through fast food or come home and make a huge mess to get dinner ready because a lot of the prep work has already been done. And I've been on the keto lifestyle for over a year now. So I eat a lot of meat. I'm not a salad person. So my version of keto is mostly meat cheese and broccoli and eggs and it's nice having all this hamburger pre-made so that I can just pull a pack out of the freezer, turn the grill on and, and cook some burgers when I need a dinner and I don't tire of the meat so. I on the other hand eat very little red meat. I try to eat a lot of chicken or no meat at all. And even though these are patted, if you did change your mind and decided you needed a pound of hamburger ground up. It would be easy enough to thaw a package of this out, three burgers frozen into a package, and you'd have a pound of hamburger once it was thawed that you could combine back into a ball or throw into a skillet and scramble up into just regular ground burger. And these do make really good hamburgers. Not the best burgers I've ever had though. The best burgers I've ever had when I was in college my college girlfriend's father, Mr. Boris, made hamburgers with a special seasoning and he would put cereal in them and they were so good cooked on the grill because the cereal would absorb all the juices. Unfortunately, keto hamburgers don't allow for cereal inside. Okay. I'm reminding you, put Alice outside. Alice is our cat. I'm reminding you, put Alice outside. Here's a reminder, take the garbage down. Thursday night is garbage night. We're recording this on a Thursday night. Here's a reminder, take the garbage down. I'm not sure if the smart devices make us smarter or dumber, but we have reminders for most of the things that we need to do. We usually only get this opportunity to buy bulk from the farmer twice a year. So it's usually sometime around the 4th of July and then again around Labor Day.
And if you don't currently have a farmer that you have connections with, I'm sure if you asked on social media, called a local butcher or meat shop and asked, I'm sure they could put you in touch with somebody who takes orders. We did redo our kitchen about 10 years ago. This would have been a lot more difficult than our old kitchen. We didn't have much counter pot space. I know some people that pre-make meatballs and freeze them so they can quickly have meatballs for spaghetti or just Swedish meatballs. We'll take some of these frozen patties with us to camp when we go camping and pull them down into the refrigerator a few days before we need them. So that 10 pound bag got us 25 patties. So we must have made those a little bit bigger, that bag. I'm really not good at math on the spot on camera. Jennifer, are you gonna check the ones in the freezer and give us an update on their status? Not frozen. So we have 20 pounds completed. We still have 20 pounds left. The freezer method's taking a little bit longer than we had hoped it would. What we often do is we'll wrap each burger individually in saran wrap, put three or four in a gallon size or a quart size freezer bag, and then freeze them like that. This time we're gonna use the freezer paper that Jennifer's cut up into small squares and freeze the hamburgers with the freezer paper in between them. Jennifer's trying to use less plastic. I'm gonna start feeding you the burgers. He's so funny. Well, this is a this is gonna be a bonus burger for somebody. It's a little on the heavy side. Aren't we all? I'm trying. Jennifer, I see that this wax paper seems to only be waxy on one side. Is it gonna matter? You know, according to my parents, no. I like these Ziploc bags that have the white section on them and then I use a Sharpie to write the month and year. Our refrigerator freezer, usually we put some vegetables in our more everyday use frozen goods. We'll put these downstairs in the deep freeze freezer. And then we just bring a bag or two up when we need it. We're a little shy on our 40 pounds here because I couldn't wait and I went ahead and made two patties and cooked them on the grill almost immediately when we got the hamburger. What kind of music do you think we should use for hamburger packing when we time lapse this? Well, I typically choose the country folk genre. Yeah. It's available for free from YouTube. Here we go, country folk. It's not country folk, it's country slash folk. Oh. I thought you meant like country bumpkin. I'm not even sure if you're allowed to say country bumpkin. <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Just kidding, there's no sponsor. So I ran out of patience waiting on the ones we put in the freezer to completely freeze. But they did get a lot more firm. We'll get these ones into the freezer before we start working on the next 20 pounds. So I carried the last 20 pounds down to the deep freeze, stacked them in there nicely so they'll freeze without being stuck together. We're going to go ahead and process the remaining 20 pounds now. These hamburgers were actually making a little smaller. We're making some for Jennifer's parents, and instead of being third pounders, she's cutting them down to two ounces a piece. Not true. So again, we've really liked using this system. We've been buying it bulk like this, fresh from the same farmer for, you know, probably not quite 15 years. And really, it's not even for me about saving the $30 it's having a really good quality burger in the whole cow, knowing that the cow was humanely treated, grass-fed, local, and it's also supporting the hard work of the farmers in our area. And I think maybe as a result of the pandemic, more people are maybe looking to buy it this way. It's definitely scary thinking about being in a situation where you either can't get to a grocery store or the items that you want aren't available. So I'll feel good to know that 
we have all this meat in the freezer, we won't have to worry about where we're getting it from. Me too. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll go ahead and leave you with that. You don't need to watch us process another 20 pounds. But again, thanks for watching. Please click that subscribe button. Tell your friends about us. Don't forget about our milestone giveaways. Any last words? Nope. All right, thank you everyone.